Hi, welcome back to ToddFun.com, where I do whatever I think is fun and sometimes helpful. What I have today is a repair uh, of laptops. Got a couple laptops, um, nothing wrong with them. There's some really nice Toshibas, but uh, the power cord that uh, jacks in and charges it, keeps it alive. Well, very common problem with these. People trip over these and they snap off. They You've seen them in pretty much every every laptop that plugs in. Someone comes along, breaks off. Either this breaks, and you can buy another one of these though, but more commonly, that uh, female barrel jack in there will bust in, inside your laptop. So what I want to cover is on a couple laptops here, I'm going to show just a, essentially as short a video as possible about how to get into them, and how to get to that jack, and how to replace that uh, barrel, uh, female barrel jack inside it, or, and or fix it. Uh, it's, it's not too complicated to get into them uh, once you know where the little bits and pieces have to come off. For the most part, you you have to take the battery out because there's screws under there. You have to take the memory panel off on most laptops. There's screws under there. You have to take the hard drive out because sometimes there's screws under there, but uh, for sure you have to have the hard drive out because it's integrally connected into the uh, into the motherboard, so the laptop. Uh, uh, hard drive has to come out. Um, other than that you'll have a whole bunch of little screws they are all the way around the bottom of the case they all have to come out um, find them all um, uh, you want to probably uh, push your finger on some of these labels because sometimes you'll have a screw hidden underneath a label sometimes you have to take these little rubber feet off not not so common anymore on laptops but on some equipment you have to take these little rubber feet off if you get a screw out from under there there's sometimes there's screws on the back. This one doesn't have it, but I have another one I have to fix. It has screws on the back hinge. Um, once all those are out, you open them up, get them on your bench, and for the Toshibas, right across the back here, there's a plastic rail, and it'll be a little different shape every time. But you get a screwdriver under there, you pop that little plastic rail up, and there'll be three screws holding that, uh, there'll be three screws back here holding this uh, keyboard in. You lift the keyboard out and then there'll be some cables, uh, some ribbon cables and some uh, connectors in there uh, that go up to the switches and the power buttons and, and the mouse pad and stuff down here or the touch pad. Those have to be disconnected. When those are disconnected then we'll work around the edges here with a screwdriver starting on a corner and we'll pry that really thin line right there We'll pry it all the way around. You keep working your way around that little edge and all those little snaps, there's little tiny snaps in there. They'll all come off all the way around and then this top will come off. And that will expose the, uh, uh, the motherboard inside along with that barrel jack that's broken. Sometimes it's a plastic break. Sometimes it's broken on the motherboard and you have to solder a new one in. Depends on the damage that you're going to have inside here. Um, so, uh, for the most part, let's just get started on that. But I do have one helpful hint uh, I want to share right away before I get started. And that's these, uh, these little uh, parts bins. Now, a lot of times, uh, they're not too thick. They're about an inch and a half, two inches thick. You get them at Harbor Freight when they're on sale for a couple of bucks a piece. Uh, yeah, you can store your bits and parts in them, and they're great for that. But keep a few extra empty ones around um, for when you're disassembling stuff. Because what you get is these open up and you have all these little buckets in here they come out they can be rearranged you can change the order that these are in and what I like to do is I like to say start taking apart your product here and put your screws in and or small bits and as you work across this this box of uh, these little boxes you'll eventually probably fill them all up. Well, when it comes time to put the product back together again, well, you have everything already in order. You just reverse those, those little bins backwards and you're not trying to figure out what screws you should be using or not using or what bit goes first or second. And then you just comfortably work your way backward as you reassemble something. Uh, if, you need, if it's a bigger project, get a couple of these. Um, and you can rearrange the size of the buckets and you can drop little paper notes in them if you have to take notes of say what size screws you used where um, you just drop a little note in there, a little, little post-it note in there 
and they close. So guess what? If you can't finish your project because you've got to go fix the, the wash machine or the dryer, or you've got to do some other project, you just snap it closed, stick it on your shelf, and your parts don't get messed up or lost until you get back to your project again. Really handy. Keep some of these around. We'll call that one full. We'll move on to the next, the next one. When you take out the screws, keep track of the length and size. If they're all the same, it doesn't matter. If you find ones that are longer and shorter, keep them separate. Take notes of where the long and short ones go so you don't have to figure out where those long ones go when you put it back together again. It won't go together well if you don't keep track of that. This one doesn't want to come out. Sometimes you just can't get them to come out even when they're loosened. This is a magnet out of a hard drive. So if you ever find an old hard drive, like a just a you have to have a computer hard drive, take it apart and pull these magnets out. They're extremely powerful um, magnets that come in handy. And that's the thing you rub to get it charged up. But sometimes you just leave it hooked on there and that'll give you a nice good charge and you can stick it down in there and take out your stuff if it doesn't want to come out there. So yeah, all that extra magnet strength pulled it right out where otherwise it was hanging up in there. And then you can charge it up again. Keep it charged up. Every single screw is the same, so they can go in the same bin, and uh, you don't have to worry about sorting them. And I was missing a screw. One little screw on the bottom. That was causing me my frustration. If I managed to leave that in. And it looks like this, I got it apart, but the, this keyboard has has uh, some ribbon cables that just absolutely have to come off first. So, looks like that pops off. And sure enough, the keyboard has some screws. Just a bugger to find them all. Now this should probably lift up. It's got a little clip right there. And yes, this keyboard is... There we go. And there's a couple little snaps right here. You push them forward and these come right off. And then that's... That little ribbon there was inside and there's another one right here I don't know if you can see it right there there's another little one and it's the same thing it's just got a couple little clips on it you just push forward and once you push them forward it takes that uh, pressure off of that ribbon and then the ribbon just pulls out you can see then this this ribbon is free now and uh, there was another one right here, but I was able to loosen it up on the other side. But I see now it's easier, it's easier to do it right here, there, and there. And then this is for the touchpad, and that's easier to do that right here. That's how they kind of designed it. Okay, so what do we got here? We've got a dirty mess. We're going to blow this out. This is going to be right here. That's the broken power connector. Nothing really to solder. It's just plastic is broken for the cowling that stuff's down in there. Huh. Makes it a little tougher to fix, I think. Okay, I got some 
JB Weld. This stuff is amazing. It will hold just about anything. Yeah, once you mix these two parts of epoxy, let it set up a little bit so it gets kind of firm, but not too firm. And put it in where you want it. Tighten things down, and it'll hold a lifetime. Give it a better ability to grab into that plastic. I want to scratch all the different plastic bits that I'm going to epoxy, and then that uh, that epoxy will grab into that plastic better. Only way to do is make sure we don't get any epoxy on here. So I'll put a I'll put a little uh, piece of uh, electrical tape over that so that we don't actually forget and. Uh, Get a little in there. I wouldn't want any down in there. And that'll pull back out once everything sets up. Just mix two equal parts of this. I like to cut them nice and keep them in the package. Like that. So you can hang on your pegboard and find it easy next time. Mix it up real good with a, with a putty knife. If it doesn't mix good, it won't really work. You don't want it to set up on your, on your spatula, so you clean that off real good. Okay, we want to get the epoxy right here. And this is the hole. Where that uh, needs to plug in at. Pulled out the little piece of tape that was keeping it from getting cooked on it. Okay, it's been all night long. Um, everything has uh, dried. If you can get this on camera here. This is the uh, all the epoxy that has. Oops, right there. That's the epoxy. To all that is epoxy around there. This is the actual plug. Um, it's pretty much in there for permanent now. And then on the side here, that's where the power is going to come in. And we just have to put it back together again. We'll start with this part. We've got these little ribbons that have to be all hook up inside first. Forward and back. Get the bag of screws. It works. Well, not yet. I'm not done too. Unplug. You see, the lights, are on. the lights are on and we are charging. Should I leave that in? <laughs> you did drop it. That was. That was it would have been uh, great. Right? Oh, I would have laughed for hours and hours <laughs> all the way to the computer store as you're buying a new one. Oh, well, I can't tape it now, I'm changing colors. <laughs> Just leave it in and go for it. <laughs> well, that's it. We're done. We've uh, fixed the power connector. Um, plugs in just fine. It's going to last probably the rest of the lifetime of a laptop. Thanks for, thanks for joining.